calling this a lost season for Washington does a disservice to the Wizards. After finally trading Bradley Beal in the offseason, this was always going to be a transitional year, although it's fair to say the on-court product has been even worse than expected. Thankfully, the Wizards have found something in fourth-year player Denny Avdia. Or perhaps it's more accurate to say that Avdia found something in himself. A sturdy 6-9, Avdia made a name for himself in Washington with defensive play early in his career, but his offensive role was always uncertain thanks to a shaky jumper and unclear roster fit. However, a series of transactions and ailments have resulted in complete rotational upheaval. The Wizards traded starting center Daniel Gafford before the deadline, bought out reserve guard DeLon Wright, moved Jordan Poole to the bench, which has somewhat revitalized the helter-skelter shooting guard, and dealt with injuries to new starting center Marvin Bagley. Besides missing a few games due to his own minor injury, Denny has been the biggest beneficiary of all those missing shots and touches. After growing his role in January, Denny's usage spiked up to 22% from February onwards. In the neighborhood of players like former teammate Kristaps Porzingis and Spurs guard Devin Vassell. Usage is the percentage of a team's plays that a player uses by taking a shot, assisting a teammate, or turning it over. Interestingly, Denny, a good passer, is assisting less often in his current hot streak than he was earlier in the year. Instead, he has made a concerted effort to get up shots, particularly at the basket where he takes half of his attempts. He's taking more than four additional shots per game since February started, up to 13 field goal attempts from nine. That's a lot of new shots. Denny's emergence culminated with a 43-point outburst against the Pelicans on Valentine's Day, the fourth straight game in which he scored at least 20 points. After missing a few games with injury, he's continued scoring between 14 and 18 points in each of his last seven, a notable improvement for the career nine-point scorer. The inflection point began in January, when coach Wes Unsell Jr. moved to the front office and assistant Brian Keefe was promoted to head honcho. Keefe has empowered Denny to handle the ball more. He's setting a career high in touches this season and recently he's averaged 64 touches per game, just a few below Steph Curry and Mike Conley. Washington has the fastest pace in the league and Denny is grabbing and going more than ever. The Wizards roster upheaval has forced the team to use smaller lineups, but Denny is feasting on the boards. After averaging a tad over six per game for the first half of the season, he has reeled in nine per contest since while posting one of the league's best rebounding rates for a forward. Denny has long been empowered to bring the ball up off live rebounds, but he's not doing it for fun anymore. Where in the past he might have looked for a kick out for a corner three or pulled up to reset the offense, now he's looking for someone to hulk smash for a bruising layup. Denny uses his shoulders like sweaty pasty battering rams. Even in a half-court setting he is hunting weaker players and running them over like so much roadkill. It's not just strength that's fueling his success. On the rare occasions Avdia doesn't get the rebound himself, he's sprinting to the hoop in transition, where teammates are doing a good job finding him. There's a reason they call the man Turbo, and it's not because he casually jogs around. His newfound aggression translates in the most fundamental way too. Denny is dunking the ball at a higher rate than ever. The average NBA player actually dunks less often, as a percentage of total shots, as their career goes on. But Denny is putting up the best dunking mark of his career. This takeoff from behind the dotted line showcases his underrated athleticism. The key to Denny's offensive sustainability, however, might be his improved three-pointer. After coming into the season with a revamped, higher arcing shooting form, Denny isn't taking many more threes, but he's making a lot more. After shooting around 31% in his first three seasons, Denny is nailing 40% of his triples this year. He's still only taking three triples per game, four since February. But defenses no longer treat him like a plague monster. Even given his low volume, defenders feel obligated to at least attempt a close-out opening room for Denny's dribble drive game. The new attention allows Denny to decisively catch defenders off guard, utilizing a quick burst to get past scrambling defenses and get to the rim. Of late, Denny has been driving far more than he has in previous seasons, 10 times per game, about the same as Paolo Banchero and Tyresa Halliburton. In those forays to the paint, he's been passing less and shooting more. He almost always goes to the right. Per synergy, Denny drives right three-fourths of the time, barely ever going straight or left. That predilection towards his strong hand will be a problem in the long run, but young players usually need to develop some level of ambidexterity. 
smart defenses have already begun shading him heavier to the left and we'll see more of that until Denny can prove he can make them pay with his sinister side. More defensive attention in general has highlighted one major problem for Avdia. A penchant for truly terrible turnovers. Those bruising drives result in a fair number of charges and they aren't exactly judgment calls. And while Denny has very good vision for a forward, he doesn't always put the right touch on passes, floating them past rim runners or lofting easily intercepted softballs to shooters. When he puts his head down and gets to the rim, if the shot isn't there, his instinct is to force feed whoever is sitting in the dunker spot. It often ends poorly. His teammates do not have great hands, and plenty of perfectly acceptable passes are fumbled away. But this is still mostly a Denny problem. Turnovers are a natural byproduct of a young player expanding into greater space. When you give a toddler a mail-order toy, some packing peanuts inevitably fly. Messes are to be expected. Denny is handling the ball far more than before and feeling out what works and what doesn't. Many of his issues are addressable, particularly as he matures and tightens his handle and decision-making, but they still stick out right now. In general, Denny has been more aggressive and less hesitant this season. His straight-line drives add a little oomph to a Washington offense that lacks it otherwise. Avdia isn't meant to be a first or even second option on offense in the long run, but we've rarely seen him even pretend to be a scorer in his first three seasons. This new mindset is a welcome development. Maybe in the right situation he can be the first or second option, depending on how he develops. Defensively, Denny remains unusually flexible. He ranks second in Ball Index's defensive versatility metric for all players who have played at least 1,000 minutes. And his list of most common matchups includes Jalen Brunson, Luka Doncic, Paolo Banchero, Jimmy Butler, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Wizards often station Denny as the last line of defense. Denny has played a little bit of small ball center, but even when he's guarding a forward, Coach Keefe positions him aggressively. He'll have a foot in the paint despite guarding decent outside shooters, but he's a good enough close-out artist to sprint back and bother his mark when the ball swings their way. If he's guarding a non-shooter, he'll be so deep that he has to watch for a defensive three-second count. Despite Denny's size and athleticism, his relatively short arms limit his steals and blocks. But he's positionally sound and takes a lot of pride in defense, a rarity on a Washington team with the worst defensive rating in the league. The team surrenders six more points per 100 possessions when he's on the bench, in the 90th percentile and the starkest on-off split of anyone on the team. Strong on-off numbers have been a consistent theme for Denny over each of the last three years. The team is simply better when Denny is on the floor. Avdia most likely won't be a consistent 30-point scorer. But the ability to hit open threes and a new willingness to attack the hoop put his ceiling on stilts. If he can up his volume a little bit more, he profiles as a good starter on a playoff team. He has the exact mix of ball handling and passing that a tertiary starter needs to be a plus playmaker. And a little less offensive responsibility and a little more experience should alleviate the turnover problem. The defense will get him on the floor while the shooting will keep him there longer. Playoff teams are desperate for jack-of-all-trade players with positional versatility, so if Washington's rebuild goes slowly and they want to stockpile more assets, Denny could be an intriguing high-value trade chip down the line, although I don't suggest it. And currently view Denny as key building block in this rebuild. Will Denny Avdia earn any end-of-year awards? No. Is he a future superstar? Maybe, I think. But even in the turbid waters of the Potomac River there are glimmers of hope to be found in the muck. Not every player has to be a household name to be an important contributor. Avdia is becoming the exact sort of player every winning team needs to complement their alpha dog. With rookie Bilal Koulibaly showing intriguing flashes, particularly on defense, and two first-round picks in this year's draft, Washington's reload is coming. At just 23 years old, Avdia should grow into being the leader of the team through the next few years. And when the Wiz are ready to compete again, Avdia will be squarely in his prime and ready to potentially be the dominant player that the Wizards hope and most fans believe he can be.